Hey YA nerds, my name is Kay and I like to read a lot and welcome to Kay Reads A Lot, the weekly vlog I guess and review channel where I get to talk about any book I feel like. Uh, you may notice we have a different background today. It's because I rearranged my room completely and uh, the door that I had behind me before is now blocked by a bunch of stuff. So it is now manga, um, which I actually feel a little bit better about, I guess. Um, you can also see I have an office poster in the background over here and some weird wires because my television's over here. So changes, why not? Um, and I, I, you know, it's a book review channel. I guess I should have books behind me, but you can also see how much of a nerd I am. So <laughs> um, anyway, sorry for the long hiatus, the long unexplained hiatus. Uh, October got really stressful and then the election happened and I just didn't feel like doing this. <laughs> so um, I also just got a third job. My life is crazy. My life is crazy, guys. So anyway, uh, because this week is Trans Awareness Week and uh, when I post this video the day after that, it will be Trans Day of, of Remembrance. Um, I want to talk about a trans book. So this week I want to talk about If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. Uh, I've reviewed Meredith Russo's other book, Birthday, which was so good and I loved it. I actually own that book. It's on my bookcase over there. Um, I own that book. I loved that book. And I really enjoyed this one too, although if I had to pick between the two of them, I think Birthday is my favorite, but we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll get to it. Um, but anyway, let's talk about this one. So, uh, If I Was Your Girl was published May 3rd in 2016, which was not that long ago. Um, and the really interesting thing about this book is that it's the first YA book that has ever had a trans person on the cover. Um, so this is a trans girl on the cover representing our trans main character, Amanda. And it's the first time that this has ever happened in 2016. Can you believe that? That's crazy to me. And if you can hear some noises in the background, it's because my cat has decided to go crazy at right this moment. So good. I missed you guys. <laughs> anyway, so first ever trans person on the book cover. It might be first ever trans person on a book cover ever. Um, I don't remember, but I know definitely first time for a YA book. So that's pretty cool. Um, this book also was on the rainbow lists for 2016. It won a bunch of awards. It won, won the Stonewall Award uh, for children's and YA lit. Uh, it was also on two of Yalsa's quick pick lists. Uh, so it was on the list for um, fiction and also top 10 in 2017. And Yalsa also gave it the best fic for young adults also in 2017. So it is a pretty good, interesting book. Um, did I mention it's 280 pages? Cause it is, it's not that long, very short book. Could definitely read it like in an afternoon. Um, did I read it in an afternoon? Uh, maybe like two or three days. I read it like two years ago, I want to say. Um, so it was still fairly new when I got it. Uh, and yeah, it was pretty good. Let's talk about it. If I Was Your Girl is a story about Amanda Hardy. Uh, Amanda is a trans girl uh, and at the beginning of the story, she kind of alludes to an incident that's happened. You don't really know the whole detail about it until the middle towards the end, kind of, um, where something happened to her at her hometown and she can no longer go to school there. So instead of suffering in her hometown, she moves in with her father, who I'm pretty sure is estranged from her mother and her that divorced, something like that. It was a while that I've read it. Um, and she starts at a new school. Uh, at this new school, she presents as Amanda. She goes by Amanda. She, um, they never say in the book, uh, the author Meredith Russo never says in the book, you know, anything about her transition, which I think is a good choice. Um, but at this point in the story, we can kind of assume that Amanda has gone through a lot of the steps for transition. Um, she passes as a girl, um, which is like a weird thing to say, I guess. But because of that, she starts making relationships with people. She gets a boyfriend and she has to kind of make the decision. Do I tell these people about my identity or do I keep it a secret? And if I fall in love with this boy at some point, am I going to have to reveal that I'm trans? Um, it's a really realistic story. Um, it's a coming of age story. It's also a coming out story because, you know, at some point, eventually, if, if that's the plot of the story, you know, it's going to happen. 
Um, at some point in the story, she has to come to terms with the fact that she has to tell people who she is um, or deal with the consequences of people not knowing her. Or, or she has to tell people who she is and then deal with the consequences of that action as well. So it, the book itself is a very interesting subject and a subject that a lot of people have had experience with. Um, the fact that Meredith Russo herself is trans and can therefore write from her own experiences, although she does admit there's a afterward where she does admit that she and Amanda have not shared the same experiences, which like good for Meredith Russo because Amanda goes through some harrowing things. Um, She's coming, the story is coming from a place of understanding and a place of love and also, you know, a place of experience. Um, a lot of trans people go through exactly what Amanda has gone through in this book. Um, so this book's really important. Uh, I'm glad it's won all the awards that it has, especially the Stonewall Award, which is so prestigious. Um, and, you know, it's a story that is important to be told. Um, and that's also why I wanted to do it for Trans Awareness Week. So that's why we're talking about it today. For the tropes for this, um, let me explain the tropes again as usual, like I've been doing, because that seems to be helpful. Um, this is a list of phrases and themes and things that I think are interesting that a lot of YA books fall into. Um, I compiled this list using the help of friends, librarians, uh, websites, TV tropes, fan fiction tropes, uh, and put it all together. And I find that assigning tropes to books kind of helps you um, decide, you know, what you like in a book and then go from there, uh, you know, what you want to read. And that's really like my mission in life is to find books for people. Um, based on what they love and whether that's like, oh, I like a video game, so I don't like to read. Nah, I could find you a book. Or, oh, you know, I only read fan fiction, so I don't really know what kind of read, what to read for print media. I could find you something. Um, so by assigning tropes to books, I think it makes it easier to find things that you like. Um, and that's really the only reason I do the tropes. I used to do the tropes to like make fun of books, but I thought that was kind of mean and I don't really do that anymore. Um, so anyway. Uh, as I list the tropes, I will describe why I'm like assigning these tropes to this specific book, but there will also be definitions down below. Uh, I might have to change one of the definitions for this specific episode. I will talk about it when I get to it. So anyway, we have broken family in it. So Amanda's family, I'm pretty sure her parents are divorced. Um, she's living with her father during the book, uh, as opposed to living with, you know, more than one parent. Um, when I say broken family units, I don't mean that in like a negative way. I just mean that, you know, families are, um, the families in these stories have been split apart for whatever reason. And that's true of this book. Uh, we also have clueless adults. Unfortunately, her father kind of doesn't really know how to help her or what to do for her. Um, and it causes like a lot of issues and drama in the book. Um, we also have Masquerade. This is the trope I want to kind of change the definition of specifically for this book because we are talking about a trans main character. I don't want it to seem because like the definition for this is like characters pretending to be something they're not. I don't agree with that definition specifically for this book. I do think, however, in terms of Masquerade, we can say like characters hiding a very big, deep secret part of themselves in order to, um, you know, protect themselves and keep themselves safe from other characters around them. I still think that if I change the definition to that, Masquerade still kind of fits in for this because Amanda is technically tucking this bit of herself away. It is because she's afraid of getting the crap beat out of her because it's happened to her before, which is upsetting. Um, but also like it's an experience that a lot of trans people have gone through. Um, so for this, I'm going to say masquerade for the tropes. However, um, it's, it's not that she's pretending to be something she's not. Amanda is a girl. Um, she's just hiding that she's a trans girl. Um, which I totally understand. Anyway, uh, the next one's new kid. Amanda's the new kid in school. Um, things happen when you're the new kid in school. You know, uh, the trope kind of applies when like, you you're new and so you have to like get reintroduced to the school you have to worry about finding friends where am i going to eat lunch it falls all into that kind of thing for that trope um we also have wrecking ball endings the ending of this book killed me when i read it um 
I get so empathetic towards characters and then things happen to them and then I'm upset. So that happened in this book, no spoiler. Um, there is a happy ending in this book, so it's not like a sad ending, Wrecking Ball endings, but it is like an ending that was like, ah, oh, my, my body, my soul. So, uh, and we also have youths in danger. Uh, unfortunately, the world that we live in, and even the world that we lived in in 2016, um, it was not safe to be out and trans, or trans and out rather, um, or just out in general, you know, with regards to any kind of queer identity. Uh, if someone found out that you were trans, there was a big likelihood that you would be murdered. And Amanda has to deal with this fact of her existence and her identity throughout the book. Um, there's a lot of, she alludes to a lot of instances in her past before she transferred schools um, throughout the book. And so that's why this trope really applies to her because her entire existence puts her unfortunately in danger. And that is sadly the experience that a lot of trans people have. Um, a lot of gay people too, but in this instance, we're just talking about trans people. And now my cat's hissing at the other cats. Today is a good video, very good video. Um, so that's it for the tropes. Uh, if you want to talk about any of them, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, if you have a recommendation for any tropes that I might have missed um, or anything else you want to like talk about with regards to that, let me know and we can chat. I'm not super great at keeping up with the comments, but I'm trying. Rita Likes is my favorite part of this video. I'm going to have a theme song eventually. It's going to happen. For Rita Likes, uh, we're doing things differently like I did last time. So uh, before I used to do two uh, recommendations from Goodreads and two recommendations from novelists. Now we're doing one from each and one from me because I'm trying to be better about making connections <laughs> between books. Uh, not between people, no. Um, so for Rita Likes, for If I Was Your Girl, we have from Goodreads, Two Boys Kissing by David Levithan. Uh, this book is about two boys whose names I can't remember right now, but I actually kind of know what this book's about, um, who are kissing in public to try to beat the world record for longest kiss. Um, the Guinness world record for longest kiss. So it's, it's a big deal. It's important. And I think while this is happening, there's like a lot of comments about them. I have this feeling, is this the book with the Greek chorus of, of gay men? I feel like it is. Uh, David Levithan wrote a book where two boys wind up together and as they are together during the course of the book there's like a bunch of dead gay men I think who are commenting on this relationship I think that's this book um I could be wrong please let me know if I'm wrong uh I think Goodreads recommended this book based on if I was your girl because it's about gay guys and trans people and gay people are the same right Goodreads Ugh. so anyway um, it's about coming coming out as well because I'm sure like one of the characters in Two Boys Kissing isn't exactly out and now he has to be to do this kissing thing with the other boy, whatever. Um, you can see my disdain <laughs> for Goodreads. Sorry. Uh, the other book from Novelist is Symptoms of Being a Human by Jeff Garvin. I actually read this book, um, but unfortunately for myself and also you guys, I don't remember anything about this book and that is weird because I'm the type of person I read something it's in here forever and I could like tell you the the plot I can tell you anything you want to know about it but this book I cannot remember so sorry Jeff Garvin um but this book is about a non-binary main character whose name is Riley and they decide that they want to start dressing more androgynously and they start a blog um, where they start posting a bunch of things about their experience as a trans non-binary person. Um, and because of this, um, there's some issues that happen at school, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> um, so they have all these issues. Um, I think they wind up getting bullied or something like that and it takes a turn and they have to kind of like figure it out. Uh, I think this book is a better uh, recommendation based off If I Was Your Girl because it is about like coming out, um, discovery, um, you know, being your true self, uh, dressing in the clothes that fit your gender, um, which is something Amanda and Riley both go through. Um, it's also about trans issues because non-binary issues are trans issues. Um, 
A lot of people want to argue about that, but in my opinion, very similar issues, if not almost the same issues. Um, Riley also has to deal with like socially transitioning. Um, so in my opinion, Symptoms of Being a Human is like the book that comes before If I Was Your Girl. Whereas like Symptoms of Being a Human, Riley's still trying to figure themselves out. Um, they're still trying to, you know, decide what their gender expression is. Um, and, you know, decide how they want to present themselves to the world. Whereas Amanda is already there. Um, so I think that recommendation is really good. And from me, I'm going to recommend a book I'm actually currently reading. Um, that book is called Full Disclosure and it's by Cameron Gar uh, Garrett. Yeah, Cameron Garrett. And uh, I love the way Cameron spells her name, first of all. I just want to say that and get that out of the way. It's C-A-M-R-Y-N. Love it. I don't know why. I just, it, it just, anyway. Um, Full Disclosure is not about trans issues. It's not about a trans girl or a trans boy. It's not about transitioning. It's not about coming out. Um, it is, however, about a young woman who has HIV. She was born with it. Um, and she has to decide, her name's Simone. She has to decide when she gets into a relationship with a cute young boy, young, that sounds weird, with a cute <laughs> young man who's her age, um, if she wants to tell him that she's HIV positive. Why do I think this book is kind of like if I was your girl. It has nothing to do with disease. It has everything to do with the fact that Simone and Amanda both start dating boys and then have to decide how much of themselves they want to share with that boy. That's why they make me think of each other. They're also both told in the first perspective, uh, first point of view, first person point of view. Um, so I think that they relate to that. The writing in both of them are also very similar. Um, you also find out in If I Was Your Girl that there was another queer character in that story. I won't tell you who. Um, and so, you know, full disclosure is also has a wide, diverse cast of queer characters in it. Um, I feel like If I Was Your Girl walked so that full disclosure could run. Um, because I've never seen so many queer characters in a cast book before. Um, so that's why I would recommend this book to someone who liked If I Was Your Girl. It, does, it doesn't have any trans people in it. However, or at least none that I've... I'm 150 pages in, so like, I'm not done with it yet. I'm halfway through. There might be a trans character and I just don't know about them. Whatever. Um, but I recommend it based on the writing style, the fact that like disclosure is a big thing, discovery is a big thing with both of these novels, um, and that's why I feel like if you liked, if you like If I Was Your Girl, you'd also like Full Disclosure. Uh, for my review for this book, um, I want to give it an 8 out of 10. Try not to give things 10 out of 10s anymore because I got yelled at. Um, <laughs> so I'm giving it an 8 out of 10 because it was fantastic. It was really... It, and it's one of the first... Like I said, it's one of the first books that really talks about trans issues coming from a trans author using the a voice of a trans person to talk about these issues and bring awareness to this. And it's also just a good story. There were a lot of parts of it, many parts of it that were kind of, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Predictable, unfortunately. I mean, I read too much. I read a lot. Uh, I'm almost at 200 books this year. I think I'm at 160 right now. So I've seen everything. I've seen it all. Um, that being said, if Meredith Russo had to follow like a structured plot in order to get this book published, that's fine. I don't penalize her for that. I think that's great because this is a very important book and it should have been published regardless. So maybe I say eight and a half out of 10 because I feel bad. <laughs> this is why I can't review books. I feel bad about giving them like real reviews. Um, so really good. I think you should go out and um, own it, buy it, read it. Like I said, it's a really important book um, and a great read, I think, for Trans Awareness Week. If you don't know anything about trans people, it's a good book to start with. It's a good jumping off point. Um, and you might learn something about your fellow human. So uh, that's all I have to say about this. Sorry this video is so long. I'm so chatty lately. Oh my goodness. Um, and I guess I will see you guys next week. If you want to recommend me anything, feel free to comment below or you can follow me on Instagram. 
uh, where I post sometimes <laughs> about books that I'm not going to talk about here. Um, and you can always, like I said, send me a recommendation if you feel like it, and maybe I'll add it to the TBR. Maybe I won't. But anyway, peace out, Wire Nerds. <laughs>